Gamers, what's good? I am joined by chat right under me here. They're not saying hi, YouTube. They don't want to talk to you. They don't care. They don't care, okay, that they're on video. They don't even think about that stuff. So as per usual, every time we get a new set, we do one of these deck showcases and different people from my Discord will send deck lists as well as replays so that we can showcase them. And I'm kind of in a rush right now because in two weeks, somehow we're going to be getting another box that's also meta shifting. Probably going to make a video about that too very soon. For one, the full armor Dark Knight Lancer helps so many decks that we have like, I think two decks today to cover just from that engine alone. Then obviously there's the battle in boxers. Uh, Volcanic I already made a video on, but I'll still include them in this video since the video is meant to be a bit all-encompassing. And we also have the Unchains, obviously, that we need to cover this video. So let's not waste any time. We're going to go start with the first deck list. Yo, did you guys see that YouTube smile? Did you guys see that? That was good, right? The <laughs> work smile is crazy. That customer service smile is crazy, dude. Okay, 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 okay. Enough, 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 enough laughing around, enough goofing around. We've got many decks to cover here. Starting off, starting off with Pitasov's Spring Ins. Uh, this list is rank four deck. Making a lot of rank fours, very epic stuff. You'll love to see it. Your end board is an Omni Negate with your Regulus as well as one to two pops plus the full armor Dark Knight Lancer. Very strong stuff. Let's go check out a replay. All right, so Pitasaws did warn me. He is going to lose this replay. He said the purpose of sending this replay in particular for Springins was just to show how they can play through so much interruption and also obviously uh, make use of the brand new XC's armor engine. So he is going to lose because he's playing it to Max C, but it's more so just because Max C allows him to show how much interruption he is playing through, you know? So let's just, let's just go ahead and check it out here. So playing against... Rescue a slab. What? So draw into Maxi here. Okay, so let's go. So we go Great Sand C Gold Gold Gonga go, Gongaga, and uh, we go Maxi on Welcome. So we don't have any plays. Okay. So this turn we don't have any plays. Good start. Opponent summons Lab. We draw into Rocky, and then they bounce Lab. And get the Stovi Torby. Summon the Torby. We get another draw. They're going to go for Stovi Torby to get a set big welcome. You'll have to see it. Absolutely love to see it. All right. Here we go. Big welcome Labyrinth. Big welcome summon the Lovely. Lovely bounce our impulse. Then we can trigger Lovely. Trigger the Stovi. Trigger the welcome. And we're going to imperm the Lovely. So they don't get to set again. They're going to go for Stovi. Discard the impulse. Set a card. Activate Labyrinth, Labyrinth, summon another Impulse, and swing for a lot of damage here. A lot of damage. So, uh, we getting in there? We getting in there? Okay, so it's maxi time, but let's see. So we we can... Oh, so we can cheat out Spring Merrymaker. I mean, Spring Ends, Merrymaker. They're going to chain Impulse. We're going to chain Maxi. This is a pretty cursed game overall, but to solve, so I'm not going to lie to you. This replay is pretty cursed all in all. All in all, pretty cursed replay over here. Welcome Labyrinth, summoning Ariana. Targeting our Springin's Merrymaker. But, I mean, I guess we are going to be playing through a lot of interruption here. So, dump the Springin's Brothers with the Merrymaker. Brothers going to trigger to summon back our Rocky, right? Yeah. And then they get the Ariana effect. They get the Stovi effect. They get a bunch of crap. Let's go fast forward. Okay, they pop the Branded in High Spirits in our hand. They get to search themselves that level 6. A new Labyrinth card. We draw into Tally Ho! Tally Ho is broken. So, we get to go for Rocky. They're going to go for their areas here. Uh, which, uh, what, they're just going to set a trap from hand? Is that what they're going to do? They're doing that effect? Oh my god, uh, disgusting. Yo, Max C into area set a trap is freaking gross, man. Anyway, we're going to go for the triple tactics thrust to get ourselves a Springins Watch. And Springins Watch, since we have the field spell, we can search a kit and dump a Springins. And then kit can add back to our hand the Brennan High Spirits and put the Rocky back in the deck. Then we can banish two from the grave to get our booty. Activate booty. Put these two up into an Abyss Dweller. I don't know what Booty does, by the way. Uh, and then we can go into Xyz Armor Fortress after we activate a Dweller to negate all their trap effects. And then we get to go for the Xyz Armor Fortress and search the spell and the trap. And make full armor Dark Knight Lancer. And they summon <laughs> Lady and go Ku Klux. And then we go Armored Xyz. And they go Terrors. That's crazy. Tally Ho is crazy, obviously. Tally Ho is broken. Um, yeah. Playing through a lot of interruption here, but not a lot, of, not a lot happening though. But you know, very good deck, very good deck. So get to dump the what's that one called again? Sprint. Yeah, this is just a lot of cards happening. You know, 
Go Merrymaker again. Yeah, to trigger Rocky and attach it. Then go... Whoa, are you trying to go for Zeus at this point? Okay, so you're going for the Sargus. And you get nibbed. Ah, uh, that's... Uh, that's tough. That's tough. But if you got that Zeus there, that would have been hype. That would have been hype. Did you already lose? Do I need to watch the rest of this, man? Tally ho. Let's move on. This is Unchained. This is Pokemon Trainer's Unchained list. And uh, yeah, Unchained, it's really, really good at playing through pretty much every hand trap. Except the one that everyone's running at three. The one and only Maxi. So you'll have to see that. Uh, so yeah, can't play through Maxi. You pop the cards. The cards trigger. They summon other cards, which is really epic. On your opponent's turn, tribute their monsters. Like, whoa, that's crazy. It plays through evenly. Hey, hey, this deck is safe from evenly. Evenly is really popular right now. I've been telling everyone, run three evenly. This deck doesn't care. If you activate evenly against this deck, they're just going to trigger all their effects, pop their own stuff. After evenly resolves, they're going to just summon a bunch of other crap. And you build basically no advantage and lost your battle phase. So, uh, yeah. not It's not trash, chat. Chat, it's not... Oh my god, dude. Chat is just talking. Oh, man. Yeah, I definitely don't think the deck is bad. I think a lot of people are giving this deck, like, too bad of a rep. I think people are exaggerating right now because, like, Snake Eyes genuinely feels tier zero. So, like, decks that are tier two feel really bad right now. So, we go Abomination's Prison, which searches us a Unchained card. We're going to set our escape so that we can pop it with our Aruha. And it triggers in the grave to summon out the Unchained Soul. We're going to normal Rhino Warrior to summon Yama. Yama, uh, we can add it unchained from deck or grave to our hand. Then we can trigger the Fiendish Rhino Warrior in the graveyard. Uh, dump the uh, Sharvara, Sharvara, and we get to search a Sharvara with the, the Link Monster. Then we set Abominable Chamber of the Unchained. Go into Unchained Soul of Rage, trigger the, uh, the what's, what's this one called? Uh, the Shiama in the graveyard, popping our trap card. Uh, pop the chamber. Chamber triggers. You can special summon one uh, unchained monster from the deck. We're going to summon the blue guy. And then we get our Shavara, Shavara sorry, from the grave. I need to get used to these names. My bad, chat. Make a high wave king, C a wave high king Caesar. And this is a spell and trap negate. And we have the soul of rage. Okay, so pretty like simple board, you know. Uh, so we go, okay, quick effect to pop our link. Link triggers. Link adds to our hand the... Aruha, okay, because they went to battle phase and you wanted to play around evenly a little bit. All right, and then they go Imperm. Oh my goodness. But wait, I'm confused. Oh, it's only spells and traps that special summon a monster? Okay, so this board was really scuffed. Damn. Super Heavy Samurai won Decade's Tourney yesterday. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. I don't know. I still, I still think Super Heavy is kind of... But fair enough. All right, so escape of the Unchained set. We can go for Sharvara. Go for summon out the Abominable Unchained Soul. Sorry, I'm trying to keep up with this stuff. Like I, I literally, I, I'm just, I don't know this deck. <laughs> so I know some of the cards, but like nothing too crazy. We can go Dark Contract here. Dark Contract, search the Requiem. I think this is going to be to make a match next, right? So Requiem targets Dark Contract. They're going to go for Maxi. We're going to Ash it, obviously. Uh, and I think at this point, so this dude... Oh, well. I'm not going to lie, bro. Kind of a scuffed replay. <laughs> uh, yeah, kind of a scuffed replay. Not going to lie. Kragen Pass. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of based. I mean, got to put some respect on Kragen Pass, dude. Yeah, uh, decent replay, I guess. Next up here from Mazinger, we have the Boxers. I think Moz sent like three lists for this video. So it's really what should Moz play yet again. But uh, yeah, I mean, this deck is pretty much the best way to play Boxers. Unfortunately, Boxers are atrocious. Uh, I tested them like pure and Moz tried, I think, like four or five different builds just trying to figure out uh, a build that actually works for this deck. Yeah, they can play to Maxi pretty well, but they also just like were not doing enough for how crazy this format is. So you really needed something to go with them. Now, unfortunately, one of their best cards that you would run a three in the pure version is Promoter. But Promoter locks you into Battle and Boxer, not just like after it's used, but for the whole turn. So even though it summons two of your Battle and Boxers from the deck, it's actually not that good of a card. I think you're probably better off just e either not playing it or playing just one copy. In this deck, it's more so going to be used as a good top deck slash good follow up 
in the grind game. So the two engines do have a lot of synergy. The main synergy really is that, well, for one, obviously the boxers don't give a shit about getting locked into XCs because that's all they do anyway is XC summon. And also a really good thing about it is um, your Kashira engine can pretty easily get you to Rice Heart, which is a level four fire warrior, you know, that special summons itself to the field which kind of works in tandem with your other battle in boxers. Because even if you get uppercutter, obviously you can search the sparer. But in other cases, like if you have chief second in hand, it's not really that bad to just like special rise heart after searching it off Fenrir. And then you can just normal chief second, go into your Dempsey and you get yourself like a literal, like an actual negate. You know, it's pretty hard for this deck to get negates. Usually Kash Tira is kind of known for having these really oppressive boards. But that are very susceptible to like like big blowout cards such as evenly you you can actually set up some real negates in cash tira thanks to this engine obviously i don't think this is necessarily the best way to play cash tira uh oh yeah diabelle is a good example yeah so you can use this to like negate diabelle uh you can use this to obviously negate the original sin or an evenly or something like that so just being able to give cash tira some actual you know some actual negates is pretty good now is this the best way to play cash tira probably not but it's by far the best way to play boxers. I mean, like 100% the best way to play boxers. There's no way. Yeah, yeah dude, it's it's just boxers with a tiny, tiny, tiny little Cash Tira engine, you know? By far the best way to play it. We're going to go check out the replay. Shout out Moz, man. Moz really cooked for this. He really tried to figure out a way to make boxers playable. If you guys are mad at this and you'd prefer having a pure list, that's fine. Pure is just you're going to be stuck in gold, man. Like, it's really, really bad. We're going to do two replays for the boxers just because, like, I'm super hyped for the boxers and I want to give them more showcase. I just want to give them a bit more time, a little extra, uh, just because I'm biased towards them as a, a massive Hajime no Ippo fan. So, here, this is... Is this supposed to be the more... Uh, just, yeah, okay. So, this is basically... This is your most straightforward combo. If you have Upper Cutter and Unicorn, this is, like, your absolute best combo, pretty much, for the deck. Uh, these two cards... They go really well together, actually. They go really, really well. Fenrir is not bad either. You don't get full combo, but Uppercutter plus Fenrir is also pretty good. Uh, but here, you go Unicorn. Unicorn is going to obviously search the Theosis, at which point you activate Theosis, targeting Unicorn. Uh, get yourself a Fenrir. Fenrir can add to the hand the Rise Heart, and then you can use these two. Make yourself a Shangri-Era. Then you can go for Rise Heart effect, special summon it, use its effect, banish the Big Bang, get to, you know, banish the top three cards of your opponent's deck. And then you get to grab one of the materials on the Shangri-Era and uh, summon it. So that's really, really strong. So we're going to probably, yeah, I was guessing we'd grab the Fenrir. So grab Fenrir and then we make ourselves our Arise Heart. So super crazy stuff. Then you can normal summon the Uppercutter. Uppercutter can search the Battle in Boxer Sparrow, special summon itself, make a King Dempsey. And King Dempsey is going to be able to search out our counter trap here, Battle in Boxer Cross Counter. And we can detach our uh, our rollerballer. So yeah, that's a really cool thing. Actually, I said rollerballer. My bad. I said the wrong name. It's boxer sparer. Um, another really cool thing I forgot to mention: uh, Balan boxers. You know, when King Dempsey detaches, it's gonna proc the effect of a rise heart. So in this way, even though you're making an arise heart with one material, by the time it's your opponent's turn, you're he's already gonna have his three materials because on his, on your opponent's turn, you're gonna use this effect again. And uh, the material is going to get banished. And then your Arise will be at three materials, which is actually really, really strong. So, yeah, super solid. Look at the setup, man. This is actually really good. Really, really good stuff. So, we get to detach here. And then we get to trigger Shangri-Ra in the standby. Summon out a Unicorn. We've got three materials on our Arise heart. Our opponent is playing Branded. Going for Reasoning, which is uh, cooked as hell. Reasoning. <laughs> okay, okay. They only they only had to Reasoning for two here. They go Kitchen Dragon Maid. Uh, we're gonna we activated our arise heart effect of just attaching there that's gonna happen a lot we'll just fast forward here actually because it's gonna be a lot of arise heart activating um and yeah so arise then we go for fenrir effect banish we go for unicorn effect banish from extra banish our monster already cleaned it up didn't even need anything else but yeah dude this is actually a really really good setup now next up moss told me he had a really good combo uh not a really good combo but a really good replay so we're going to check out that replay as well. That one was more like just the basic combo, you know, the bread and butter combo of the deck. So this is supposed to be a better combo or a better replay. I'm not exactly sure why, but we're going to fast forward through this math mech turn because I'm not trying to watch a uh, 
a play-by-play -play of math mech to be honest so uh yep they have circular they go for the sigma oh my goodness they grabbed the super factorial that never happens they go for alan version alan version what are you gonna search diameter no way. oh shit equation oh my god this guy this guy's thinking different oh he already had the one of okay that's great that's great you love to see it making a splash mage here then we're gonna go for splash mage bring back the diameter from the grave and make ourselves a link decoder i hate this deck now we're gonna go into a transco talker I hate this deck and bring back the link decoder using the transco tucker we bring back the splash mage making what okay heat soul strange but w i guess get a draw use all of these make oh my god this card is so epic bro i've never seen this card before what does it do we send a d save worm to the grave so we have one spell and trap negate in the grave and we have the super factorial with three materials set they're gonna go for super fact as soon as we special summon our fenrir interesting choice here interesting choice and they're going to go for Laplacian, trying to send it as soon as possible here. So we're going to go for the Laplacian effect to send the Fenrir as well as a card from hand, sending the preparations as well as the Fenrir to the graveyard. Our hand is pretty crazy here, though. So we get to special out the Kashira Ogre. And obviously, they do another send with their monster here. We're actually going to swing with Ogre. That's interesting. Then we go for Ogre effect. Oh, it's because they had the Omni Negate. Oh, but then they had Valor for the Ogre. That's very, very sad. But it is what it is. So let's fast forward a little bit here. Okay, so now we're going to normal summon our upper cutter and we're going to get ourselves a battle in boxer sparer, special the sparer. Very important to special sparer in the second main phase. I made this mistake before. Uh, after sparer is special summoned, you cannot conduct a battle phase anymore for the rest of this turn. So very important to do that in main phase two, you know, because for some reason, uh, battle in boxers are not swinging. Uh, but yeah, so anyway, we make a King Dempsey here. King Dempsey is going to search a fire warrior so we search the uh, kashira rise heart yeah because he can search any fire warrior so banish the scare clock ashira here make himself level seven we can go into dark arm dragon of annihilation oh that's really good detach the ogre pop the link then we can uh detach the rise heart and pop the back row that was equation and we can go for king dempsey to make him make himself unaffected i guess and then go into zeus why did you detach a material if you were going to go into zeus that doesn't make sense to me, but whatever. We're going to set the Flamvel counter. Oh, to have a banish material for Flamvel counter because you need to banish a, a fire with 200 defense and you have one right here. My bad. And then they go Raigeki and it's a damn good thing that you did that. All right, my bad. I, now I understand. That's very good. Very, very good. Okay. So negate the Raigeki. They go into a firewall defensor, go into Lingaribo, and then they just scoop it up. Pretty funny. Pretty funny. I like it. Looking like both better boxers and better cash. I mean, I think the advantages that it like i think it genuinely provides advantages to cash so next up we have the volcanic snake eyes deck from bidoof uh yeah it's like an ftk deck i already showcased this on the channel but i figured uh you know i'll include it in this video just in case that people like haven't seen that video because i want this video to be a little bit all-encompassing you know covering pretty much all the new stuff from the new set yeah i think the ftk deck is great genuinely i think it's tier one in the game right now uh people might say i'm crazy for that but I, I just I just don't see how it is in tier one to be honest. Like it's it's not it's not a significantly weaker Snake Eyes. It's maybe marginally, and it's it's such a small difference in terms of like what they can do, and it even has some advantages over Snake Eyes. So, in my opinion, uh, Volcanic FTK Snake Eyes deck is like pretty much tier one. Amazing deck. We'll go check out the replay. So I mean, like for for the FTK replay, like. I think we all know what it does at this point. If you don't, I mean, I will just commentate it real quick here. It's a pretty simple combo, to be honest. Oh my god, Bidoof. The field, though. The field. Uh, yeah, it's a one-card combo with Ash, you know, so it's very simple. Uh, I'm going to fast-forward a little bit here since I already know it. So we go Snake Ash, search Poplar, Poplar trigger in the hand, special summon itself, Poplar search the original. Then you link away the Poplar to make a Linker Rebo, at which point you put the Poplar in the back row. Then you actually activate the Snake Eye Ash right now to go summon a Flamberge. You go Flamberge effect, bring back the Poplar in the back row. You activate the original Sinful Spoils, summon out the Rimfire, go into Promethean Princess, Bestower of Flames. Then you're going to trigger Flamberge and Rimfire, and you're going to use Rimfire to send to the grave a uh, a uh, Volcanic Trooper, and you summon two from the grave with Flamberge. Then you bring back the Volcanic Trooper with the Promethean Princess, searching a Volcanic Emperor. Then you can discard the Emperor to give your opponent a bomb token in the middle zone, at which point you are gonna you can summon a Hita. Send the Hita as well as your Poplar to the Grave to summon the Awakening of the Possessed Inari. Make a Geonator uh, Transverser, and you get to search one of your traps with the uh, the uh, the Fox. I forgot. The Awakening of the Possessed. Then you go for a Volcanic Emperor, Special Summon from the Grave, burn for 2,000. You set the Volcanic Emission. You can go Geonator Transversor, switch control of both of these. Tribute uh, with uh, Link Karibo to summon your second Promethean Princess. It's because she can't use the token as material. And then, you know, you just set both your trap cards. You've got more than enough damage to burn for game. So on the next turn, you activate Volcanic Emission. And then you... Well, 
then you go Kurunai. I I'm just going to say you should always activate Kurunai first, but whatever. There, there you go. You got the FTK. The FTK is done. Super epic. Next up here from Kenny Pickering, we have Generator Runic. Uh, so if you're just wondering where, you know, wh where the synergy is, basically we just got Slipnir, the Runic main, which is a level 9 monster, right? So basically every single Runic spell can summon a Runic main. So you can go for this with any other of your uh, generator monsters and go into your XC stuff. I'm guessing that's about the extent of the synergy. And it makes a lot of sense to me. Like you don't really want to have to summon Hugin and this. Like it's not, it doesn't play like a traditional runic deck. But I haven't seen it in action yet. So we're just going to go uh, check out the, the uh, Slipnir. I don't know how people pronounce this card. Anyway, the runic main. We're going to call it the runic main. Uh, let's go check out the replay. Okay, so let's check out this deck in action. I think it looks super cool, by the way. Like, I do think it looks really sick. I love Runic decks, even though I feel like Runic has been really bad lately. So could this be it? Could this be the good Runic deck now? We'll see. Playing against Snake Eyes going second. That's already a really good sign of a good replay. If we're playing going second into Snake Eyes, although we do have Maxi, so... Maxi might carry a little bit here after they go Snake Eye Ash. They're going to trigger Poplar. We're going to go Maxi, right? Yeah. Let's see. Did they have the out? Do they have the out? Do they have the out? Of course not. Okay, so here we go. That's going to make our life a little bit more simple here. <laughs> yeah, runic, runic into like a uh, maxi challenge into runic is kind of disgusting. So good luck with that. Yeah, they just have to pass on IP. I mean, not bad though. Like this setup is pretty crazy actually. So we're going a uh, flashing fire on IP before they can even activate IP in the main phase. Then they're going to actually negate it. Man, that was a crazy interaction. Hold on. That was crazy. So we go flashing fire on IP. Then they chain the trap, send the Diabelle to the grave to negate flashing fire. Then we go droplet to send the flashing fire to the grave. So that way, okay, that makes sense because like the flashing fire gets off the field. So they can't negate it since their, uh, their negate trap targets the card on the field. And at that point it resolves. So IP gets negated by the droplet and afterwards um, it gets destroyed. That's really, really good. Holy shit. That was a good interaction, Kenny. W. W. So here we got a set, obviously, with the Diabelle that comes back from the grave. And now we're feeling a lot safer, right? We can go Runic Tip, grab Runic Destruction. What, are you going to pop the field spell? Like a boss? Like a turbo boss man? Oh, yeah. Okay, I love this deck. This is this is it. I'm going to have to try this one. Uh, wait, never mind. I dismantle generators. Uh, whoopsie. Okay. So we get to summon out the Vala and summon out the Mardell. Mardell's going to search another copy of Lopter. And we have our talents in hand still. We're going to make ourselves a Leviathan. And Leviathan is going to trigger. We contribute it to summon the big boy right here and grab some of our opponent's cards to attach to it. Then we're going to detach one of the materials to uh, both make both players draw a card and then attach, I think, a material from both hands to itself. Yeah. And after that, we get because our opponent drew a card, we get to trigger our boss stage. And summon a bunch of uh, summon a generator and a bunch of tokens, right? Oh no, the the tokens are only on opponent standby. My bad, I forgot about that. So we get to summon back the Vala here, and we're gonna go into a Enter Blatnir. Love the name on this card. Uh, detach material, banish a random card from our. Oh my god, that's pretty good. And just set droplet. I mean, this is great, honestly. That's a lot of control setup, and now you get to summon a generator and a bunch of tokens. So that's really really good, actually. Yeah, I feel like you should have probably summoned it in the extra monster zone. I don't really see the point of not getting another token. I think that's just kind of a misplay. Not a huge one, though. It's not really the end of the world, but you should have probably put this guy in the extra monster zone, to be honest. Um, either way, make a, both both players draw a card here. And then because they drew a card, we can make them discard a card with our uh, hard generator boss of storms. They're just going to set a card. Oh, my God. this dude! I can't believe this dude didn't scoop yet. I mean, this is just complete destruction, right? Complete obliteration. So going enter Blatnir. Yeah, dude, that was crazy. That was not, that was a really good replay, actually. Yeah, this looks super sick. I'm not going to lie. That looks awesome as hell. And that play with the Forbidden Droplet was super swag. I'm not going to lie. Super good replay from Kenny there. Next up, we have my favorite deck for this video, DDD. And with DDD, uh, it's one of the best decks to utilize the full armored package in. You can lock down your opponent with Kali Yuga, then pop any back row they set, and suck up their monsters using your Lancer, your full armored Dark Knight Lancer. Very, very good deck. I love DDD. I absolutely love it. And I love talking about it and watching their replays. So I just can't wait. Let's go check out that replay right now. I'm ready. Let's get into this DDD 
Epic replay. Let's see what Maz has in store for us this time. Wow. We have the Swirl Slime, the Dark Contract. This hand is amazing. We're going to go for Dark Contract to search out our DD Griffin. After which, we can normal summon our Copernicus and send to the graveyard a Swirl Slime, banishing it from the grave to summon another Swirl Slime from our hand and specialing the Griffin afterwards. This is great. Now we can make a DDD Wave King Caesar and go into the Marksman King Tell. After which, we're gonna use these two to go into Cross Sheep. Cross Sheep? But why? Well, we can dump the DD Vice Typhoon, Typhoon, banish two from the grave to Fusion Summon, where Cross Sheep points to our DDD Flame High King Genghis, summoning the DD Griffin from the grave with the Cross Sheep and triggering the Genghis, which uh, specials, I think, from the grave? Yes, exactly. This is really good. Then we can grab our DDD Headhunt and go into our Xyz Armor Fortress. At which point, Xyz Armor Fortress can detach one, grab the full Armored Xyz, and in this deck you actually summon the Dark Knight Lancer on this turn because you're going to be using the trap to make Kali Yuga on your opponent's turn. So once you have your Lancer, you can lock yourself with your Gilgamesh, set up two scales, trigger the, uh, the Vice King Requiem to summon itself, and you can bring back the High King Genghis. After which, you can make a King Deus Ex Machinex. And this is crazy, right? So you have two level 8s on the field that you'll be able to Kali Yuga lock with using full armored Xyz. You have the Suck from DD Divisor King Deus Machinex. And you also have the Suck from full armored Dark Knight. Like, this is insane. Plus the DDD Headhunt, which is a, a pop, I believe. No, it, take, it takes control. This is insane. This is absolutely incredible. And this is why I love DDD so much. So we're going to start with the full Armored Xyz. Oh my god! Stonks? Kali Yuga? Lock? In DDD? Hold on. Now our opponent is <laughs> going to go for Gishki Vision. <laughs> and just set a monster and pass. Wow. That's, that's awesome. This is awesome. So now we can go for full Armored Xyz equipping our boy and grabbing their phase down monster as an Xyz material, switch our monsters to attack and swing for big damage. Oh my god, they had the Imperm. No way. This sucks. This sucks. Anyway, yeah, very good. Very good. Very good. That's a great replay and a great deck showcase video. Right, chat? I think we can all agree that was the best way to end it.